who's been to uh, Olivia as well. And she's gonna give us a little bit of a recap of her personal experiences uh, before Chavez, or during Chavez, and during Maduro, oh, during yeah. Maduro. Isolina. Huh. Oh, how am I gonna follow Caleb? <laughs> I don't think I have anything to say. <laughs> um, to, thank you everybody for being here um, tonight. So I'm just gonna speak based, uh, based on my conversations with people in Venezuela. I've been there only two times, um, but hoping to be back many more times. Um, and just talk a little bit about what the people down in Venezuela have to say about what happened in the elections. Um, so I just want to start off by saying that I went there in 2009 and um, I saw a different Venezuela in 2009 than I saw now. Um, in 2009, um, I saw uh, or I felt that people were more hopeful. Um, I, I felt based on what I saw that the Bolivarian revolution was moving full speed ahead uh, with their socialist project, building a socialist economy from the base. Uh, during this time, um, I, I felt like um, that project, the socialist project that the Bolivarian Revolution uh, represents, um, has been stuck. Not only by some of the challenges that they face within their own, their own revolution, but by um, external factors. Um, you know, we know that you know Venezuela, um, within the past 17 years, has been through a coup against President Chavez. Uh, the oil strike or the oil lockout in 2002, 2003. Um, and one thing that we know that has been consistent about Venezuela is the media propaganda, the, especially the international uh, right-wing media propaganda against Venezuela. You can easily turn on the TV now and um, turn on CNN or any uh, mainstream uh, news media, and you're gonna get some news about Venezuela and it's gonna be against the government. So one of the examples is uh, in Spain. We all, we all I, I mean, I'm assuming that um, most of you know what's happening in Spain. Spain, Spain had recent elections and the, el, the Pipi, ¿cómo se llama? Podemos. Uh, so the, the, the um, uh, government party, right? They, you know, they they won most of the seats, but Podemos, right? Podemos came in strong, and um, and has challenged the bipartisan, you know, um, system in in Spain. And a couple of days ago, um, Rajoy came on TV to talk about the uh, elections in Venezuela, talking about uh, human rights violations in Venezuela when he has his own mess in Spain to take care of. So you have these kinds of situations where you have uh, former presidents and world leaders coming on TV talking about Venezuela, talking against the government, uh, mm -hmm. talking about human rights violations um, in Venezuela when they have their own mess at home to take care of. Um, so back to what I saw in Venezuela, um, the times during the elections was very tense. And um, before going there, I thought that the results of the elections were going to be different. I um, I have been following Venezuela for a long time and, and more closely recently. And I, based on my understanding of the process, I felt like, like the government was going to win the elections. But my, um, my views shifted once I got on the ground because I had the, the opportunity to talk about um, to talk to people about how the situation was at that time. And uh, for the past three years, all the attacks against the government have intensified. Uh, it's nothing that's happening in Venezuela, it's new. The media war, the economic war, all of that was happening when Chavez was alive. Uh, but it has intensified. You know, well, the death of Chavez was a trauma that the Venezuela people had to go through. And you know, no one can deny that he had a strong leadership. 
he's one of the he was one of the most important or you know he's one of the most important leaders we've had in the 21st century so losing Chavez um, and the way he passed away it was trauma traumatizing for the Venezuelan people and they had to go through that they had to you know go through a presidential election uh, the Guarimbas in 2014 the economic war the psychological war that the right wing, the oligarchy, and the international uh, sectors are waging against uh, the Bolivarian government. Um, so it was a time of uh, tension. It was not a violent tension, but it was a tension that you could feel when you had conversations with people. And you would get different views about um, what's happening in Venezuela, depending on who you talk to. I had the opportunity to spend time in one of the um, middle class or upper middle class neighborhood, uh, Chacao, Chacaito, where the Guarimbas happened, and you would talk to people there, and there, anything they had to say about the government, it was full of hate, full of hatred. Um, you could feel it, you could see it. They don't want Maduro, and this is not only about um, an ideology thing, this is also about a class thing. They cannot stand the fact that someone who was a bus driver is now the president. And they have to call him Mr. President because he is the president of all Venezuelans. Um, you know, then you go to the barrios. In the barrios, the people are going to give you a different perspective because they've been, you know, through what the Fourth Republic was. You know, they, they've been uh, marginalized and oppressed under other governments, and this is the government that vindicated the historically marginalized and oppressed. So, you know, coming from uh, from seeing what was happening uh, before 1998 to all the social achievements that they have, that they have had within the Bolivarian Revolution, um, they understood that no government other than a revolutionary government could actually um, help solve, solve the issues that Venezuela is facing right now. There is a huge economic crisis, and it's not only Venezuela, it's, you know, the crisis of capitalism, you know, and it's impacting every country, especially um, smaller countries like Venezuela. Um, so that's one thing, and uh, we also need to understand that the Bolivarian Revolution is not a government. The Bolivar Revolution is a movement that didn't start in 1998 when Chavez came to power. It started 20 something years ago, 27 years ago, after the Caracas. When people uh, organized and mobilized and, and you know, they, they said, we cannot stand this anymore. We have to fight back and we have to um, come, come, with, uh, come up with our own ways on how to solve the crisis that the country was undergoing um, in 1988. And then came the, the popular coup that Chavez led, and from then, you know, uh, the process of, of, mobilizing, of, of mobilizing people um, and then coming to power. So nothing, nothing is going to stop the revolution. Nothing is going to stop the Bolivarian Revolution, and all revolutions go through process of change, uh, challenges, um, defeats. You know, we cannot downplay the fact that this was a big defeat or a big blow, let's say it like that, against um, the Bolivarian government. And um, I think what happened in the elections, the results of the elections, is uh, speak to the political consciousness that was developed in Venezuela after Chavez came to power. You know, like for decades, for decades, people were voting uh, for the same people. You know, the right wing, oligarchy, same people, people that were um, stealing uh, the resources, giving away the resources to imperial powers, and after Chavez came to power, the people developed this political consciousness. The revolution developed this political consciousness, and that's why now um, the people, you know, those two million people who didn't vote for the Chavismo, 
they knew the impact that their vote would have, you know? Um, I, we spoke to many people who felt like they were not being heard by the government, um, that the government was not uh, addressing some of the issues that the people were facing, such as the scarcity of products, um, the, the, you know, the economic crisis, and it, it's not only the oil, you know, the drop in the oil, oil prices, it's also the fact that 70% um, of the production and 80% of the distribution is in the hands of the oligarchy. So they stopped producing, they stopped distributing, uh, or they would um, smuggle the, the merchandise outside of the country. So it's not that there's no products, it's just that it's, it's not that there's no money to buy, it's not that there's no acquisition, power of acquisition, is that a lot of these basic products, toilet paper, uh, beans, corn flour, things that, you know, basic needs are being smuggled out of the country or being hoarded. Hoard, 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 hoard. hoard. yeah. And, you know, the, the shelves are empty. And that's what causes the long lines. The same thing with uh, with the Bolivar. The long lines in the ATMs have a lot to do with the fact that these Bolivares are being smuggled out of the country and being resold, right, outside of the country at a higher price. So uh, so that's one of the things that, that was happening there. So those two million people, and I've heard people say, oh, um, is that the Chavistas didn't go out to vote? That is, I don't think that's accurate. There was um, a participation of about 70% in the elections, uh, which is normal for parliamentary elections, for presidential elections, it's usually a little higher, it's about 80%. Uh, so there was good participation. You know, and the core base of the Chavismo voted for the Chavista government, they voted for the revolution. Five point something million people voted for the revolution. But we have this uh, approximately two million people who were unhappy uh, with how the government handled the situation and decided to punish the government by voting against their own interests because ultimately that's what it is. Um, the opposition had no uh, proposal on how to um, how to eliminate the long lines, how to, um, you know, restock the products. They had no proposals. The only proposals of the oppositions are to repeal the labor laws, to uh, privatize the gray housing mission, which has built more than a million homes for you know, the, the working class, the, the working poor, um, to pass an amnesty law to pardon those who were, are responsible for the coup in 2002, who are responsible for the wedding bus, and many more violent acts, uh, political violent acts that have happened in Venezuela within the last, I don't know, 10, 17 years. Um, and, their ultimate goal is to take the executive power, to recall the president. Uh, so th they had no government, you know, proposal for how to form a government or how to improve the economic situation. And the same, <laughs> the same people who were there in the Fourth Republic are the same people that are back in the National Assembly. So. Those two million Chavistas voted against their own interests to punish the government. And one of the things that um, is being said, I don't really know much about the breakdown of like who these two million people were, the ages and stuff like the demographics. But we do know that um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that a lot of new voters, younger voters, um, who may have voted against the Bolivarian Revolution because of all the sparsity that's happening in the country, did not live uh, or did not grow up within the governments in the Fourth Republic. So they don't have a consciousness of what was happening in the country uh, before the, you know Chavez took power in 1998. 
So that's one thing. And I, I feel like, uh, like I said, uh, the Bolivarian re 